Sports Radio 6-7 to the score. It is great to have Eddie Olchek here. Hey, He's Molly. at the broadcast. Hey, Eddie, we love you, buddy. Happy anniversary. Great to have you. How are you guys great doing? To see you. I, I, right. Full disclosure here. Let, let's, yeah, let's full full disclosure. Peel the curtain back. I got a text from Dustin about uh, eight or nine days ago. It said, hey, our anniversary's coming up. Elk Grove Village, not too far from you. What do you think? You can jump on with the boys in the morning. And I said, I'm in. Because I am. People might not know. I, I have done a little bit of work for the score back in the day day. Uh, I actually uh, was thinking about it uh, over the course of the last couple of days that uh, uh, Mitch had hired me, and I actually did a solo show, and I believe it was on Labor Day by myself. No kidding. For yeah. a couple of hours. I remember I had, uh, I had the little guy on with me, Jesse Rogers. I had Susie Colbert oh, from hilarious. ESPN. Yeah. We were getting ready for Bears. <laughs> Uh, I, I think, and that was the last solo show I did for the score. So I think I, I got the message, Mitch, that uh, <laughs> it went. I remember doing a show uh, out, uh, I think out like in Naperville or Lyle area. Uh, there was a Hooters out there, and it was I think Gail Sayers had it. I don't know if he was on every week or whatever, yeah, but I think I was out there with with Freddie, and I co-hosted a show with Freddie. Huebner. You were interviewing Gail Sayers. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and, I, and if I can, just tell you a quick story about Gail Sayers. So. My rookie year, of course, I'm from here, and I lived and died as a Blackhawk as a kid, and obviously I got the unbelievable opportunity to play for the franchise and then obviously broadcasting. But So we're playing the Edmonton Oilers in the 85 semifinals, okay? We're four wins away from going to the Stanley Cup final, and I'm a rookie with my hometown team. <laughs> and we're at the old building, the old Chicago Stadium, yep. and we lost the first two games in Edmonton. Now, remember, in 85 – the Oilers were just on the cusp of becoming the Edmonton Oilers. So we went to Edmonton for the first two games. They had home ice. We lost the first two games, I believe. The total score, I think, was like 21 to 7 the first two games, okay? Gretzky had like, what, 5 and 8 and whatever. So we come back home. You know, people are, you know, it's, it's May. People got their shorts on. It's warm out. They're at the, uh, the Chicago Stadium. I'm skating around in warm-ups, and the place is up for grabs. And, and, I, and if anybody had never had the opportunity to be at the Chicago Stadium for a hockey game or even a Bulls game, uh, I'm sorry you missed that because there was no better building, in my opinion, in the history of professional sports than the old Chicago Stadium. And me being able to be around yeah. and we come out for the game, I'm skating around in warm-ups, and I'm just like, man, oh, man. We're four wins away from going to the Stanley Cup final. We're down 2 nothing to Edmonton, but this place is up for grabs. I'm skating around right before um, we're going to have the national anthem. And as I skate to the corner, to the left of Murray Bannerman, I look into the crowd, and people are just going crazy and just clapping and everything else. All of a sudden, I look, and I just make eye contact, and there's this large human smiling, clapping like this. I look, I go... That's Gail Sayers <laughs> sitting three rows from the ice. I'm like, this is an important game. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> the Kansas Comet. Your Kansas that's, Comet that's is at the game. So uh, look at I, uh, you guys have done an amazing job. This station is, does, I think, has done an amazing job for all the franchises, and uh, you guys certainly uh, lead the crew here at the Score. So I, I have a. Uh, a relationship here with the family here at the score and uh, really enjoyed it. And it was great to see Tommy and Chuck. And uh, I used to listen to Chuck all the time because I, I, I lived and died sports as a young yeah. kid in our town. And, uh, you know, I, I, it, was, it was something that uh, I was hoping that I would be able to get into. Obviously, I wanted to become a professional hockey player, but I thought maybe down the line that uh, maybe I could get into broadcasting of some sort and ended up happening. So it was nice to see those do guys. You remember, thank you for having me. Thanks do you for having remember me. writing Chuck that letter as an 18-year-old kid that he still has? And yeah. it says, I think it says a lot about him, but even as much about you, yeah. Yeah. that you would handwrite this letter to this broadcaster about yeah. wanting to do what yeah. you ended up doing. Yeah. Well, that is the bottom line, though. You know that, right? That, that is. And uh, <laughs> is that was Chuck's, uh, one of his uh, famous phrases. Uh, I, I just it always enjoyed, uh, you know, listening to people and learning and trying to, uh, you know, be a part of that business someday. And I just happened to be able to do both, play professional hockey and then obviously get into the business. So uh, great to uh, see that. Uh, my, my printing wasn't very good back then. I could see that <laughs> at Brother Rice High School back on the uh, – on this. and I also sent him a picture too. Mitch showed it to me. Chuck did as well. So it uh, brings back a lot of memories. And uh, But thank you very much for having me today. I appreciate it. Did you always know when you were playing that you were going to be a broadcaster when you were done? Did you, did you ever view your life in that fashion? Uh, 
I think I had aspirations, Molly, that I wanted to get into the broadcasting part of it. And, you know, I didn't know how or, but right. I just, you know, I mean, back in the day, it would be, you know, you do interviews in between periods and you thanks, you know, and you just kind of built up a relationship. And actually, I got my, I actually got my start in, in broadcasting uh, was back in 94 after we won a Stanley Cup with the Rangers. There was a work stoppage like three or four months later. And uh, everybody knows I, I'm, a, I'm a horse racing guy. And, and the people, really? at, the, yeah, and the, people <laughs> the people at the Meadowlands racetrack were like, hey, you know what? You're not working. Uh, you know, why don't you come to the track? You can be our in-house handicapper on TV at the track. And, uh, you know, we'll give you 800 bucks a, a show. And I'm like, holy cow, they're going to pay me to come to the track? What a, what a scam this is. You know? That's all they knew. It would be like, all right, Molly, where's my 800? Okay, yeah. David, you're the yeah. guy. Okay, give me my yeah. betting. You give me my yeah. wager. Give me my ticket. So yeah. that was my introduction to television and broadcasting was uh, the year we had the work stoppage in wow. the NHL. I did horse racing and then push it some 25 years later. Fast forward, I got the gig with NBC and, and yeah. now being a part of their Triple Crown coverage. Yeah. And before that, obviously, you go to uh, back home to Chicago, yeah. Blackhawks 2006. And, yeah. Eddie, that's where – you have been yeah. and you established yourself as what I referred to yesterday, best analyst in town, one of the best in America, regardless of the sport. And it's been a whirlwind couple of days, I'm sure, for you, having gotten the news on Monday, having the news break that you and the Blackhawks are going to part company, could not come to an agreement. How difficult has the last 48 hours been for you and how would you describe what happened? Well, thank you, first off. Um you know, yeah, it, is, it, has been a, it has been a roller coaster ride, an emotional ride. But, uh, again, this was my decision. There was a contract on the table, and, and I just felt at this particular time uh, that it was best for me to just uh, step away and, and, uh, and explore other opportunities. And, look, at I have my unbelievable gig with TNT and, uh, you know, doing one game a week. But, uh, you know, look, at a lot of factors go into, into making a decision uh, takes two sides to make a deal, obviously, but at the end of the day, it was my decision. I'm very much at peace with my decision. It's been an unbelievable run. I, I could not be more proud of, uh, uh, of the last 16 years, you know, sitting next to the great Pat Foley for 14 of those, uh, seeing this franchise really come from, from nowhere. Right. And uh, that's the leadership of, uh, of the late Mr. Wirtz, uh, Bill Wirtz, and then obviously now with Rocky, and now Danny, you know, being front and center for, uh, you know, for the Blackhawks. And uh, it's just been, it was a dream come true. It really was. And uh, it was a real hard uh, d uh, conversation to have with Rocky uh, on Monday. It was a very difficult uh, and uh, hard uh, conversation to have with Danny and also Jamie Faulkner. Uh, but I, uh, I just feel like right now it's the best thing for me. So uh, I just want to thank the, the incredible Blackhawk fans for... You know, for supporting me through some of my most difficult times, especially, it's hard to believe, but I'm going on five years since uh, I was diagnosed with uh, stage three colon cancer. And uh, knock on wood, I'm clean and clear, and that's what I'm planning. You look planning. great. Yeah, yeah, you, thank you. Thanks, yeah. Thanks. you look, you look great. great. Thanks. Yep. But I, it just, uh, you know, lots of, you know, lots of factors go into making a, a, a decision like this. And certainly my family was a big part of this and some of my closest uh, friends and, and uh, people in my life, but it, at the end of the day, uh, I would never, I would never change anything that's happened to me uh, representing this franchise. I will always feel I'm a part of the franchise. I will, I will die a Blackhawk, and uh, I'm just very thankful for getting a chance to to work for Rocky and, and for Danny and and seeing and, and, and developing those relationships with the players. I mean, some of the hardest conversations have been, and, and trust me, Rocky and Danny in particular, those were very difficult and very emotional. Uh, but having the conversations with um, the training staff of this team, um, the broadcasters, and a guy like Troy Murray, who was in a battle himself, was very difficult. Uh, having that conversation with Pat, even though he has moved on. Um, the players, uh, in particular, uh, Kaner, and uh, some guys that have, 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 have moved on and retired or playing in other areas, to give them the heads up. So... Uh, many emotions, but I am very much at peace with my decision, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, very grateful for having that opportunity to represent this franchise as, as long as I have. We love you, Eddie. Yeah, we do, Eddie. Uh, you know, I got to tell you, I, I, I had this conversation with David um, around some of the trades and some of the things they were doing with the draft, right? And so I was saying to David, I, I have memories 
of going to Blackhawks games where literally 200 people were in the building, where you, you, could, you could throw a brick and not hit anyone. There, there was nobody in this building. And, and you worry that they're thinking that that's not so bad because they came back from that and that's when the Cubs were won and all that. But I think it's dangerous for an organization to put the faith in people that they're always going to be there for the team. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a broadcaster like yourself, a legend, a Blackhawks legend like yourself, or just fans that, that, uh, that came to love the Blackhawks and that really made an impact on them. And I just worry mm -hmm. that they're not taking into account all the way people feel. Eddie, you know, you're the guy that we watch the game with. You're teaching us. You're telling, you know, when you say to the young kids, you're telling me, oh, that's how you do that? That's what happens. Oh, well. There's so much information and content that you give to people watching the sport, and, and it's just wrong that it isn't being appreciated in the fashion in which they need to. Well, well look, at, well, thank you. And, 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 and I would hope that, and, and that's what we tried to do was to entertain. And, and obviously with the great Pat Foley is like, regardless of the outcome, we, we hope you enjoyed the broadcast. And, and we tried to entertain and, and laugh a little bit and, and uh, watch great Blackhawk fans enjoy their soft serve ice cream every once in a while <laughs> and, uh, and, and, uh, and teach the game and, and, and not talk down to the educated fan, but then also knowing that there might be somebody that turns on the game for the first time and needs to understand what is going on. As far as what is going on right now, this probably, no, I will correct myself, this should have happened a couple of years ago. Um, the rebuild should have happened a couple of years right. ago without question. Uh, any conversation that I had had with Danny, uh, with Danny Wirtz, uh, being a part of the GM search, uh, you know, kind of brought in halfway through the search or what have you, along with Patrick Sharp and Mary and Hosa, uh, I went, through, I went through something very similar like this when I was coaching in Pittsburgh where we decided to blow it up and, and, and move every asset that we had. Now, the understanding was is that you had a couple of uh, generational players that were on the verge of becoming available, and we just happened to get lucky in Pittsburgh where we moved up from the draft from third to first to get a guy by the name of Marc-Andre Fleury, the first overall pick. And then the next year, we ended up finishing second in the, in the lottery system and, and ended up getting Evgeny Malkin. If we would have finished first, we could have got Evgen, uh, uh, Alexander Ovechkin. Right. And then the next year, there was no hockey, and then we were lucky enough that the lottery system, the way it worked, is that we were weighted in a system where Sidney Crosby was available, and we had a 50-50 chance once we were up in Anaheim. were able. So... There was a plan, and I do believe, and I can say this without fact, there is a plan in place right now for the Blackhawks. It's going to take some time. Like, it is going to take some time. The Hawks know where they were, where they are, and where they are trying to get to. Now, they will be evaluated a couple of years from now, but it's going to take some time. Uh, I hope that the fans understand, and I think Kyle and his staff have tried to uh, elaborate on that and understand. Look, it, it, it's gonna it's gonna get rough. And then, obviously, in the forefront now is what the hell is gonna happen with Johnny and with Kane? Right. And those guys hold the keys. They have the no, you know, they have the no movement clause, and they they are driving the bus. So there's a lot there, but I, I do believe is that they understand. And in order to turn this thing around, and again, hindsight is what it is. They should have done this a couple of years ago. But again, look, you can't change it. You've always believed that, though. You've kind of always yeah. said that. Can't, can't, you, can't, you can't change that. You know, no. when, you're, when you're sitting dead last in the Western Conference for a while or you finish seventh place in a seven-team division, there has you know, the understanding, you know, that, okay, you know, you have to change at some point. Again, look, at, you learn from it. And, and, and obviously massive changes have happened over there just for, for obvious reasons. So... Um, it's going to take some time, and, and I'm hoping against hope is that they can turn it around. And look, at you have to draft well. You think about what has happened here over the course of the last couple of years, and not trying to go too inside hockey here, Mitch. Mitch, do we want to make the announcement? Talking that, too much uh, hockey, Eddie. Do we, do we want to make the announcement about the, the show that I'm going to be a part of moving forward? The, 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 the 10 minute the 10 the 10 minute hockey show dump and chase with Eddie Olchek right is that is that, is that what we're going to do for 10 minutes 12 12 o'clock midnight every uh, every listen. Monday or every I, I, Sunday I'd night stay up, yeah. Eddie. so, I'd so stay up. you know look at the last couple of years when when you look at some draft picks you have a, you know you have 
a couple of picks where, again, it's always easy to look back, but you, know, you have to draft well. Right. You have to make the move. I will say one last thing on that, and we can change the subject. The, get, the Making the move and moving Kirby Doc to me, I thought, was a smart move by Kyle Davidson and his staff. And to get a first-rounder for Kirby Doc, right. who has – uh, has underachieved to this point now, in fairness. He hasn't been healthy a lot of this time. But the biggest thing is, and I learned this when I was in Pittsburgh, and I tried to relay this to the franchise when I was a part of the GM, the GM search, is that figure out, and I'm sure Mitch probably does this with the talent here at the score, is figure out who in the hell your people are before the rest of the league does. Right. And if you can do that, you're going to be well ahead of the game. You're going to make mistakes. You may move out a player a little bit early, yeah. but at the end of the day, why keep throwing bad money after bad money? Now, look at I hope look at, I like Kirby. I hope he goes to Montreal. He thought there was pressure here in Chicago. Just wait. <laughs> there is a little bit more pressure up in Montreal. So at the at the end of the day, I thought Kyle made, I thought an outstanding trade to be able to get an asset. Now you got to draft well in order. So. Right. I right. think the, the outcome will be proven here in the next couple of years, and, and hopefully the Hawk can find, you know, you look at, are you gonna find, ever going fi to find another Caner? You know, no. I, I, sure, I sure hope so. Look I don't at, think so. Okay, but the generational player can really turn the franchise around, and I think that that's certainly what uh, the Hawks are hoping for and, 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 and see if it comes to fruition. Okay, I don't want to change the subject just yet, Eddie, okay. because I think the last 10 minutes were a great example of how the Blackhawks made such a colossal error in judgment here because respect the way that you've handled this, the grace with which you're, 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 you're displaying is like an example for everybody. But you just explained the rebuild, okay? Yeah. You summarized what they're doing, and nobody is going to be able to do that as well as you just did that. And having that on a nightly basis, on a regular basis, is a value to the team and the organization David, that's hard David, to estimate. David, I don't mean to interrupt you. And, and I, know what, I know it's your show. Look, look at it. Look at. <laughs> and your show, Mike. <laughs> they, 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 the, they did want me back. They offered me a contract. And look, at this is, this is my decision. And there are many reasons why. And I, and I said publicly, and I gave my word to Rocky Wirtz and to Danny. I am going to handle this the right way. And you are. I, I am not. I am not right. Right. This is me. My reputation is everything. I am not going to... I, I am not going to get into – I'm not doing that. Now, now, if I have to defend myself at some point yes. just because, I, okay, I will. But um, I, I've said, look at, look at, again, my decision. They wanted me back. I wanted to be back. But at the end of the day, I just, I just took that step back. Look at, I, will all, I, I love this franchise. I'll, I love, this is my home. This is where I will be always. But at this particular time, and I know it's going, it's hard, it's frustrating people probably just how does this happen or whatever. Look, at, I wish this, I, I wish everything would have been taken care of seven or eight months ago. That's what I was hoping. And it never happened. And, and, and we got to this point. And, and when contract negotiations happen, things happen. You read, you feel, you see the room. I pushed my agent off to the side in order to do this deal because I wanted to feel and see and hear what the hell was going on behind closed doors. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't getting third person. And then I was able to make that decision. So I wasn't blaming it on my, on my agent. I wasn't blaming it on any representative. Is that I wanted to be the person in the room to be able to know what is going on. And then I calculated everything. And, and like I said, I'm, look, I am disappointed. 100% I am. But I just felt that this was best for both sides for me to just take a step back. What is the racetrack in Seattle? Emerald, uh, uh, it's it's at? actually, hold on a second. <laughs> let, let, let's, let's, it's Emerald Downs. I will answer okay. that part of that. Thank you. But right now I am, um, I want to work. I, I love hockey. I have my opportunity at TNT, 100%. Um, I have some opportunities. I'm weighing them. My wife, obviously, of, of 33 years, so we've been together just a little bit longer than the score. So, um, <laughs> I, I, Right now, uh, I am communicating, obviously, with a lot of people. Um, I've had some opportunities, uh, you know, in other aspects of it, and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, look, at, I, I love what I do. Uh, I, I love calling hockey games and teaching and instructing and entertaining. And uh, look, at all due respect, everything that's, look, at personally, that has gone on here, uh, we all know what's going on in, in, uh, in the real world out there. We understand, and we're in the entertainment business, and... Uh, the real world has, has struck our city 
Uh, it happens, seems to happen on a daily basis, and then obviously up in the northwest suburbs where I right. live and has affected uh, my immediate family on what transpired up in, on July the 4th. So understanding is that, uh, you know, the real world is, is we need to focus on that and understand and put perspective. Uh, but the entertainment aspect of, of what you guys do and then, you know, what I have done here for the last 16 years is, is to take people away from the real world for a couple of hours every day or a couple of hours at the, the broadcast for the Blackhawk games. And, and if I can, I would, uh, the relationship with the team members behind the scenes with the Blackhawks and also at NBC Sports Chicago, uh, in particular, Kevin Cross and John Shipman, uh, our buddy Cap, obviously, uh, over there as well, and, and just all the men and women that uh, help the broadcast, and in particular, uh, Mitch Kersner, uh, Dave Turner, and Dave Ross, who are the, the, the men behind the scene of putting on Black Hawk hockey over the last boatload of years for, for Rossi and DT, and then Mitch taking over here the last couple of years. Uh, I've been very lucky to be able to work with some of the most talented people behind the scenes, as you guys do on a daily basis, and... Uh, it won't be the same, uh, but uh, I, uh, I become a better broadcaster uh, by working with those type of people. So I uh, tip my hockey helmet. Uh, I don't have a helmet on right now, but uh, maybe when I leave here, I might need to put on an old Jofa or something. So, uh, But I, I, I thank them from the bottom of my heart for all the hard work that, uh, that they put in to help put our broadcast on, and hopefully people have been entertained and uh, put a little smile on their face and uh, give them perspective over the, uh, the last little while. Always admired your perspective, Eddie. And I think that when you look at Chicago as a hockey city, you referenced Kirby Dot going to Montreal, different environment, different level of pressure. In terms of Chicago, I know that the way you handled this has been exemplary. When you look at what's ahead for the Hawks, mm -hmm. how do you think the popularity of the sport will suffer? Or are you know the, the Hawk fans are small but loyal? base uh, but it's small uh, well and will I, it get how much smaller will it get because of the struggles ahead well I, I would I would disagree with you as far as the small part I think there is a boatload of Blackhawk fans now if you're saying comparing them to Bears I heard you guys talking earlier you know yeah. Bears City yeah. we understand that it's all perspective look if you have entertaining and, and uh, uh, an entertaining product people will come People, people will come and they will watch. Look at wins or losses, you want to see an effort. Look at, yeah, you want to win all the time. Look at winning cures all. Ratings were down the last couple of years. Sure, you want to blame the broadcasters? Go ahead. Teams winning, unbelievable numbers. Broadcasters, we, Never we, weren't, we, we, we weren't blamed. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, those type of things are going to happen. And look, at, I, 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 look at, I was a fan. I think we have the best fans in the world. And I, I, I hope... I hope they understand, and I, and I, and I believe, and, and in my conversations with Kyle, Kyle Davidson, um, the understanding of, of being out there and, and, and talking to the fans. I, look, at, I, like I said, I lived it in Pittsburgh. I was the coach, but I was our spokesperson, and that's one of the reasons I got the job is because I could relate to the fans and be able to just give them enough. Like, you're not going to give them everything. That's just the reality of it. But just give them enough to understand and, and share with them and, and, and give them a little bit of insight on, on what we're trying to get accomplished. And I know Kyle's, I, I know that's, that's an important emphasis from the organization to Kyle and obviously with Luke Richardson, with my pal Lukey, and I enjoyed your guys' interview with them there a little while. And that was a hard conversation when I let Luke know that I wasn't going to be, you know, wasn't going to be with him and Steph this year, his wife Stephanie. And, uh, uh, but I think that's going to be really important to be able to relay that message and look at sell the brand, right? Sell the game and understand, yeah, it's, it's going to get rough. Like, there's going to be some rough patches. Uh, so that is going to be very, very important. But I think Blackhawk fans, I know there's a lot of frustration. I, un I understand that, and, and I respect that. And, you know, you're fans, and you can and do and say what you please. But it, at the end of the day is that there is a plan, and uh, hopefully this will pan out for, for, so, every, for everybody involved. So let's, let's just talk about you. Let's not talk about the Blackhawks. Is there a plan? Do you – I mean, you know – what you do well, and you know what you want to do. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you comfortable moving forward that you have a plan in place that will resolve whatever, you know, even if this was your decision and you didn't yeah. like this was, yeah. was happening, do you know what's going to happen in the future? I, 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 I don't know what's going to happen okay. in the future. I don't. I don't. I know, I know that the NHL schedule is coming out soon, so then yeah. I will know. <laughs> then I will know. But all I know is I got... 
Uh, I better not what say I'm doing on Friday because uh, my son might get a little upset. But anyway, so then I got a family trip coming, and I'm going to Saratoga for NBC for Good the for, for the Whitney. Yeah. Shocking. And, and then yeah, well, and then the following weekend I'm the uh, keynote speaker at the uh, Jockey Club uh, Hall of Fame induction at Saratoga. So I'm <laughs> going back that following weekend. Wow. So, you know, I got a free uh, free weekend at Saratoga, and. Uh, and then just kind of get ready for training camps around the league. So uh, that's really what's on the docket for me. And uh, I, look at, I, I love I love hockey. This is my life, and uh, I, I will I will be involved in it, whether it's on a, another level or I will just continue to be on a national level. And this will be my home. And uh, in, in for the time being, right now, um, you know, we're just going to uh, kind of explore other opportunities. Thanks for coming out. Hey, yeah, this is thank best. you. Thank Eddie, you very much. You're the best, yeah. man. Love you guys. Thanks for having People me. I appreciate you. it. People love you. Thanks, everybody. Thank Rightfully you. Rightfully so. Thank Eddie Olchek. You're listening to The Score. We are here in Elk Grove Village, 30th anniversary of The Score. We'll be right back. <laughs>